Out with the old, in with the new. It's a phrase that's quite synonymous with IndyCar at the moment, as we see some of the series' most respected veterans hang up their helmets and trundle into their retirement homes, or NBC commentary. Only in the last few years, the likes of Tony Kanaan, James Hinchcliffe and Helio Castroneves have moved on from the sport. Wait, no, that last one was just wishful thinking. On a serious note though, give it another few years and the likes of Helio, Will Power, Scott Dixon will all have likely have left the world of IndyCar behind. And that just begs the question, who comes next? We've seen this somewhat already, be it your Colton Herters, Scott McLaughlin's and Alex Pelos stepping up to take the baton forward for the American Racing Series. And at Nashville, we might just have seen the debut of another. Hey there guys, I'm Will, welcome to FP1, and today I want to talk about Linus Lundqvist, the potential new star of IndyCar. Linus was born on the 26th of March 1999 in Tereso, Sweden. I'll have butchered that pronunciation probably. Anyway, the Swede would start his racing career in karting at the age of 8, winning his first series two years later. Linus would begin to rise up the ranks until 2014, where he decided, you know what, scrap karting, let's go into some real Formula cars instead. That started in the Formula Renault Nordic and NEZ championships, and I can guarantee you now, you won't know anyone else who raced in those series that year. Part of the reason for that was due to it being a fairly new category, a nice place for Linus to start, well away from the pressure of the more established European scene. Lundqvist wouldn't take any wins in 2015, though showed off some incredible consistency to take P4 and P3 in those championships respectively. Linus would then take this experience and compete in the same championships during 2016, where Dominant doesn't quite do his results justice. 18 races, 17 podiums, and 13 wins. No surprise who took the championship then at the end of it. At this stage, it was time for Linus to move on and take the fight to some people who actually have a Wikipedia page about them. And thus, 2017 saw the Swede take part in British Formula 4. Now he'd be in a field with the likes of Oscar Piastri, Logan Sargent, that's about it for the notable names, but it's still a pretty big step up. Linus would start the year on the back foot, however, his engine deciding it wanted to be a Formula 2 Mechachrome and killing itself during each of the opening three races of the season. Did this deter our man here? Hell no, as he went on to take his first win in the series at the next round at Donington Park. Four further victories would follow, ending in a P5 result in the championship and comfortably ahead of all of his teammates. The same year, Lundqvist would try out British Formula 3 at the Belgian round at Spa-Francorchamps. Linus was on the pace right away, beating full-time teammates and later three-time W Series champion Jamie Chadwick in two of the three races that weekend. That set up a full-time campaign in the series the following year, where Lundqvist comfortably took yet another championship victory. 2019 saw Lundqvist take another step up, this time switching to Euro Formula Open. This would arguably be his toughest challenge to date, taking on a field that included names such as Liam Lawson, Carl Kirkwood, Yuki Tsunoda, Manuel Maldonado. There's another. <laughs> Crashed his cousin aside, Lundqvist would have a respectable year and finish the season as the second highest rookie in fifth. He'd also once again be top in the teammate battle, edging out Jack Doohan, who, when he's awake, can actually be pretty speedy over in Formula 2 at the moment. The transition from 2019 to 2020 would be a big one for Linus, as he swapped out the European scene for that of the States, just as the world came to an end. The difficulties caused by the pandemic weren't to phase Lundqvist, however, as racing in the Formula Regional Americas Championship, the Swede took 15 wins out of 17 races, comfortably claiming the top spot, though admittedly the level of competition took a hit compared to his European outings the previous seasons. Lundqvist had moved on from that, though, with his sights now set on the top-level American open-wheel racing, IndyCar. That meant an Indy Lights campaign for the 2021 season, and once again, Linus was right on the money, claiming victory in the opening race at Barber Motorsports Park. Two further victories would follow that season, landing Linus a P3 spot in the standings, beating out the likes of several drivers currently sat in the IndyCar roster, Benjamin Peterson, Devlin Di Francesco, Stingray Rob. Okay, not the most convincing list of names, but still. With champion Carl Kirkwood and runner-up David Malukas making the jump up to the big boys in 2022, that left Linus to clear up that season's Indy Lights Championship. Five wins and nine podiums, seeing him emerge victorious from Stingray. But whilst Rob got the promotion to IndyCar and became a meme staple on this channel, Lundqvist was left in the lurch somewhat. Sure, some tests came with Andretti and Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan, but no full-time race seat. 
At least not yet. You see, when Ed Carpenter racing were getting fed up with Connor Daly, the rumours all seemed to point to Lundqvist as a potential mid-season replacement. The team eventually chose to settle on Ryan Hunter Ray instead, though Lundqvist's turn came eventually when he became the latest in a line of drivers to sub in for Frenchman Simon Pagano after the Maya Shank racing driver attempted an Olympics gymnastic routine back at Mid-Ohio. Problem was, Lundqvist wasn't just stepping into any race weekend. This was the Music City Grand Prix, which in only two years on the calendar had marked itself as a demolition derby and a track that bites the asses of even the sport's most experienced drivers. Imagine Lundqvist's luck then when he also had rain to deal with, and uh, not just a little bit. The only way you could have made this debut any more difficult was if Benjamin Peterson was in the field. Oh wait, he was. <laughs> God help him then. P11 in opening practice was a breath of fresh air though. Okay, he didn't do so well in the afternoon, but the weather kind of made that session pointless anyway. With third practice also cancelled due to the poor conditions, Lundqvist was jumping into his first qualifying, lacking on the experience front though you'd be hard-pressed to notice that. Heading out in Group 1, Lundqvist was able to get into the Fast 12 to the surprise of the whole paddock. Granted, this was arguably the weaker of the two groups, but when you've outqualified the likes of 2023 race winner Christian Lungard and serious veterans like Graham Rahal and Helio Castroneves, that at least deserves a pat on the back. Lacking on tyres, Lundqvist would have to settle for P11 again as we got ready for the race on Sunday where admittedly his inexperience shone through a little more. Bullied out at the start, Lundqvist was starting to find his feet, though losing his air scoop and the stifling conditions likely didn't help matters much. Linus had almost made it out to the flag, though ran out on the marbles with 10 laps to go and ended his weekend in the barriers. It was the only real mistake and a pretty sensational debut weekend, and with IndyCar silly season now in full swing, Lundqvist has more than inserted his name into the running for a full-time drive in 2024. Will he get one of those seats? Well, that's still up in the air. Look at the hype for Tom Blomquist only a few weeks ago, and now that seems to have petered out a bit. But if he was announced, even at a team higher up the grid, I wouldn't be completely surprised. That, though, was a review of the career so far of Linus Lundqvist. What did you think of his performance last weekend, and do you see him getting a full-time IndyCar drive come 2024? Let me know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you dropping it a like and getting subscribed for more in the future. And of course, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. If you want to get videos like these early or just support me in the channel, then you can head down to the links in the description below. Anyway, for now, that's all from me. I'll be seeing you very soon with another video, but until then, have a good one.